six topics. So the first one, the verses one to ten, actually speaks about Arjuna's despondent condition, his depressed condition, and the second one is the indestructibility of the embodied. Uh, that is verses 11 to 30, where he is giving the highest knowledge of the supreme self or the Atman. So today, actually, we are going to start with looking at two verses from the second part of chapter two, because we are only doing selected verses. But the selected verses will actually help us to gain a summary or a some a gist of the Bhagavad Gita. So today we will start with uh, verse eleven, and after Sister Shalini uh, chants verse eleven, then I will come back to the, the explanation. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Sister Saira. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Shalini. Yeah, please. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Ashojyanan Vashojastvam. प्रज्ञावाधाषसे गो न गुशोचंति पंडिता लिटरल मीनिंग सेज हियर द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड सेट वाइल स्पीकिंग लर्न वर्ड्स यू आर मॉर्निंग फॉर गॉड इज नॉट वर्थी ऑफ ग्रीफ दो सु आर वाइज लैमनेट neither for the living nor for the dead yes sister okay thank you sister shalini so as we all know in chapter 1 what happens is arjuna had wrongly concluded that he should not fight so that is the contents of chapter 1 until the first verse of chapter 2 he is a warrior but he does not know whether to conquer or to be conquered that is his position and then slowly arjuna realizes that something is wrong with him and he admits that his nature has been soiled by weak pity karpanya dosha that is the one the last verse that we did that means he is having wrong compassion compassion towards people who does not deserve compassion okay and so his mind becomes what happens his mind becomes confused with regard to obligatory duty so he is thinking to himself should he fight as a sh- true kshatriya a warrior or respect his sentiments for his elders and retire from the battlefield so while this confusion is going on in his mind he surrenders now at last to lord krishna and he pleads i am your disciple i take refuge in you tell me what is the best action for my own good and now that he is surrender so the lord is trying to explain to him what he should do he is giving the knowledge okay so here so once uh, arjuna has surrendered then krishna begins to speak and one thing we can notice here is all this while krishna actually keeps quiet so so from this what do we learn So, uh, when we learn the bhagavad gita we should actually uh, get the philosophy of it and see how it can be applied to our life so from this point i'm um, krishna's silence it actually tells us that a true guru gives advice only when the disciple is ready when he is fully prepared to receive the knowledge so we must understand that you know in all parts of life whether we are parents or teachers or we are giving advice to somebody uh, knowledge should not be given but it should be taken by people who are interested only then the knowledge will become effective so when once uh, arjuna surrenders to krishna so krishna understands that he is interested in receiving the knowledge and he makes himself available with the advice that he is going to give to krishna and that is what he is telling that okay and here are the words here okay certain words and uh, can we have the verse 11 okay the yeah. verse 11 there yeah okay brother thank you so yes so, yes so here verse 11 so arjuna's intellect was now coming out of the confusion 
and his mind was developing devotion towards Krishna and he had surrendered to Krishna and he was ready to receive the knowledge from Krishna and at this time Krishna says Bhagavan Uvacha and here the, the um, important words here is the blessed Lord said regarding the word I don't want to go into the word meaning because I thought the word meaning sometimes it becomes a little bit um, um, difficult or not necessary okay so yes. uh, gathasu okay the word uh, gathasu sri bhagavan upadya okay see aso ashochyan as uh, uh, chalini can you please read uh, chant it yeah. for me once more yes yes sister thank you sister chalini shri bhagavan uvacha ashochyan anvashochastvam ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ vadams ta bhashase and you speak words of wisdom okay and then is the gadasun agadasum cha nanu sochandi panditah meaning the the wise people the pandita they grieve neither for the living nor the dead so here what does it mean by the word gadasu gadasu meaning those who are gone or people who are dead uh what does it mean by the opposite word agata so meaning that people who are not dead or not have gone meaning the people who are living so he is telling krishna is telling arjuna arjuna the wise the pandita they do not grieve or mourn either for the dead whose breath has gone okay or that is gata so okay gatasun meaning they have gone gone oh, meaning yeah. who the people who are dead no the panditas the wise people they do not grieve for the living whose breath has not gone agatasun agatasun meaning their time will come it is going to come but they are living and so this this is the point that he is giving here you know the wise people do not grieve for the dead and for the people who are living so he is telling to arjuna here you speak words of wisdom okay but this is actually got a little bit of ironical meaning the meaning here is although you seem to be telling words of wisdom uh, giving your reasons uh, why you know the the people should not be killed why he should not fight as though you know everything but you are not actually living it why is why is krishna telling to arjuna you are not you are only speaking so called words of wisdom but you are not living it why because you are grieving for people who are dead and now you are grieving for people who are still living okay, okay. now who is uh, uh, who is arjuna grieving for Who's Arjuna grieving for here? Anybody can say that? Who's, okay. Who do you think is Arjuna grieving for? Actually, Sahiram, can I tell something? So, yeah. actually, um, Arjuna is crying for his guru and teachers and his elderly people. You know, he's thinking that hey, they are going to die. If I kill them, they are going to die. Correct? They are the one, their teachers. they are the one their relations all the attachment is there to them yes yes brother thank you that's why so arjuna is grieving for the living people the kauravas on the other side um, for bhishma his grandson uh, yeah. his guru his uh, his cousins his friends so he is grieving for them but then krishna is advising arjuna the wise people understand that this is life the inevitable phenomenon of life you say that you know in in everyday life you can see that 
people are being born people are dying so he's telling is the wise people understand that birth and death are part and parcel of life the wise people they do not get excited when there is a birth in the family no yeah. when there is death it does not make them sad and he's telling that this process of people being born and people being dying that is part and parcel of life the procession of departing souls is unending so that is the is the meaning that he gives here okay so he yeah. is actually yeah so it's from this yeah. what we understand yes from yeah, yeah. from this uh, actually those who are living they say if they are wise right they are saying that panditas they are they are wise people living but they don't want to live is that no he is telling that the wise people they mm. understand that you should not grieve for the dead people or mm. you should not grieve for the living people because birth and death are part and parcel of life right. so you have to you have to accept it so right. if you are a man of wisdom arjuna you have to accept birth and death as part and parcel of life but what is happening to here arjuna because he is emotional because of his attachment to his kit and skin okay he is feeling yeah. very sorry he has to kill them and that is why he is saying i do not want to fight okay and he puts down his bow and arrow so he is actually lacking objectivity in facing life that is another uh, take away from this verse Okay. you should not act in life based on your emotions based on your attachments you should have an objectivity in life okay look okay. at life objectively don't let your mind control your actions let your intellect control your actions so as a kshatriya so krishna is telling arjuna as a kshatriya your duty is to fight okay but arjuna does not understand it because he he is he is of a rajasic nature so he can people who are rajasic they are always confused regarding what is to be done what is obligatory action they do not understand it so actually to some to just to tell in one sentence to summarize krishna mm. is actually in this verse drawing arjuna's attention to his wrong approach in life and what is a wrong approach in life anybody uh with not being righteous or uh, being compassionate towards non righteous people or something like that is it uh okay you have a point there but the, what is the gist of the the verse there because Guruji, um, krishna is telling to arjuna the way you are looking at life is wrong what is Okay, who is this? Who is? Yeah, you are, you are right. You are you are sort of right. Actually, you are sort of right. But the t- the two the two words I was just looking at the two words the meaning of the words. I think what uh, it means. I personally think is what is supposed to be right, rightfully done. You do it. Your thoughts are twisted wrongly. What is right? You think is wrong. What is wrong? You think it's right. So yes, it's yes. it's a. Uh, is that the way i i suppose yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. actually what you said is true you know um, that's the last point that i said he's having a rajasic intellect that is why he's not able to distinguish between right and wrong that is why he is grieving for the people uh, his uh, the kauravas who are in front of him and yeah. he's telling he does not want to fight and his the words of wisdom that he gives in this particular verses you know he is giving the knowledge of the atman so if this is okay. actually spiritual knowledge to give you strength oh, so and it the thing is like uh, he is trying to tell arjuna that uh, just i mean maybe he is trying to convince arjuna to fight because atma is indestructible and uh, as you said wise people don't grieve for the dead uh, yes correct alpha. that's the one we are coming to your point in the next point later on that is correct the because he is telling panditaha they don't grieve for the gathasun and agathasun so if you are a wise person arjuna don't grieve for the people who are dead and gone and don't pe- live for the people grieve for the people who are living because why uh, birth and death is part and parcel of life it's a never ending process but uh, like sister hori was telling he cannot think correctly 
okay he does not have that ability to understand uh, what is this, uh, the uh, what he ought to do in life it does not have that objectivity because of his emotional attachments is clouded in his action i think all of you have said the right thing that's actually that's right and also because he is in stress mode right now he is not able to take correct decision correct so yes that point, yeah Yes. Then he be bewildered. Then he asks. That's why he gets his help. Yes, he's confused, like brother yeah. said. Correct. So he's asking for advice to. Now he accepts Krishna as his guru. So he is asking advice to the guru. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we should only. How sister? You how you are relating that uh, the thinking? I mean, intelligence or mind or what exactly? I mean, how it is like he is bewildered? Why he bewildered? Like any idea, see, uh, brother. Uh, how I'm relating to the mind and the intellect is: see, when you are thinking with your mind, your actions are always very impulsive. You don't think clearly. You you jump into it. You get involved and act. But if you are thinking with the intellect, the, the, so we have clarity in thinking. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If not, we just add, uh, act on based on our likes and dislikes. Okay, he does not like to kill his uh, his relatives on the other side. But what yeah. is his duty? He's forgetting his duty. So how do you do your duty when you act based on your intellect? That's what. No, I one more thing say. here because he is a kshatriya. His job yes. is to he has Correct. to like yeah, but the protect and the administration of the uh, people. So he has to fight. But see, uh, that's what uh, in the uh, Krishna they they say that he has to do his duty. That's his duty. Uh, protecting and the killing the enemies. If he don't do at the, that right time, means he is a cheater of that whole kingdom. Correct. So yes. He has to go to America. Yes. So yes. Yes, yes brother. Point. Thank you for bringing up that point. That's a valid point. So as a kshatriya, his duty is to fight. Okay. okay. So he should okay. be fighting and not grieving for the people who are in front of him. That is the <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because okay. all of us have to die one day. So that's what he is telling. You know, Krishna is telling Arjuna, all of us have to die one day. So why are you grieving for the people yes. who are living? Nor should you grieve for the people who are dead and gone. That's what. That's what I understood. Okay. Actually, this is supposed to be a very yeah. famous yeah. verse and then oft quoted verse. Okay. Sairam. Yeah. So we'll. Yeah, Sairam. So we go to the next verse. The ah. next verse is a bit difficult, actually. Uh, you are going to the verse twelve, seven, like point twelve. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, yeah, we will go to verse 12. So, Sister Shalini, please. Yes. Yes. Little meaning says here, Never was there a time when I did not exist nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Thank you, sister. Okay, thank you, sister Shalini. Okay, so I'll go into the meaning of the verse. I won't look at the one by one word meaning. So what he's actually talking about here is the Supreme Self, the Atman, or we call it by different names, you know, the pure consciousness, it never dies. So, it exists eternally. That's what is being told in the in the verse. The Atman, okay? It exists eternally. It existed in the past, it existed in the present, and it will exist in the future. That means it persists all through your life. It does not change or die even after your death. So that is why the meaning is is given here. Never was there a time when I did not exist. What does I refer to? The I refer to the Atman. Atman, the Supreme Self, the pure consciousness. So there was never a time when I did not exist. Nor you, nor all these things. Okay? So there was a, never a time when I did not exist, when you did not exist, or all the kings nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So he's telling that all of us, we continue to live eternally. Because why? 
because of the atman he is not talking about the, about the our physical body or our mind or intellect he is talking about the atman so what is the atman atman we all know that is the it is the 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 what it is the core of the, in our all of us it's the spiritual core of every human being so this atman is the same in one and all and it will continue to exist eternally now actually how can you make it understand so in order to make it understand <coughs> uh when we were studying so we were given a few examples by our a uh, guru to confirm this uh, you know how the atman is eternal so these are the little examples i hope i mean when i was studying it at first i found it a little bit uh, difficult to understand that concept okay so see look at this example okay he's talking about the supreme truth in this verse say in your childhood when asked you are who you are you say i am a child okay uh, when you grow up and somebody asks who you are you say i am a girl much later when somebody asks okay maybe you are in your 20s or 30s you say you are in your 20s okay 20s say i am a youth okay and then later on you say i'm an adult when you are in your 30s okay 25 past and so on and later in your 60s and about you say that i am a old woman okay so you see here the i never leaves you it never dies first you say i'm a girl i'm a youth i'm a woman um, i'm an old woman so the i is always with you what is changing it is only your body mind and intellect is changing but the i you always relate you know that i never dies so what is this i that is always with you that is your atman or the self you always keep referring isn't it i'm a child okay when i was a baby now i am a woman okay i'm a man so this i never dies okay and then another example that was given to us to make us understand this uh, concept is okay um when you are using your senses you say i am perceiving the world i'm seeing the world okay i'm hearing the world when you are using your mind what do you say i am feeling and when you are using your intellect intellect is the thinking part what do you say i am thinking so the perceiving part using the body the feeling part using the mind and the thinking part using the intellect are all different experiences but the i am is continuing i am perceiving i am feeling i am thinking never do you lose your i okay so see so what is this i that you are always referring to your body is changing so that cannot be the i so there is something that is changeless within your changing body okay the body is young it is getting old uh, you lose your figure you put on weight but you still say i i i and what is this i that is always with you that is the atman the supreme self okay when you are seeing you say i am thinking i am dream when you are uh, uh, like you wake up from a dream and say okay i was dreaming okay and then like in your waking state somebody asks you what is your name and i say i am aruna i am a married woman but in the dream i might say i am a princess and in the deep sleep uh, in the deep sleep you don't have anything i am nothing so what was that i that was there in your waking state in your dream state and in your okay deep sleep state that i that i is the self which is always with you okay and another another little example a little story it is actually a little story relating to 
uh, King Janaka. Uh, okay. King ja- is it King okay, Janaka? Brother? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody knows who is King Janaka? Yes, Sita Devi's father. Uh-huh. No. Yes. Really? Okay. So, where, where is his origin? Anybody can tell me? Where is he from? Where is Sita is from? To, today's location. Janakpuri. Where is Janakpuri today? Is okay. it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's in uh, Nepal today. Okay. Oh, there is okay. a... There is a there is a place called Janakpuri and Sitapur. There is one name called Sitapur, and Sita is from there. Oh, it's in okay. Nepal. It's in yes, Nepal. Yes, India. Yeah, today is in Nepal, but last time it was in India. Like uh, oh. like Kauravas Gandhar is in uh, Afghanistan today. Afghanistan, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Okay. So the, let's continue. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sorry. yeah. So so King Janaka, you know. So one day he had a dream, and uh, he. So he he and what did he dream? He dreamed that uh, he was a beggar and he was suffering from starvation, and he wakes up frightened. And he, and what does he do? Okay, he calls his, uh, uh, the ministers, he calls the sages and saints, and he poses a questions to them. You know, so he call he calls all the wise men of the kingdom, and he asks them this question. Am I King Janaka, who dreamt that I was a beggar, hmm. or am I a beggar now, dreaming that I am a king? So in this, I don't know whether you understood. In this yeah. dream, he dreamt that he was a beggar. Then he wakes up, and then he calls all the wise men, and he has got this confusion in his mind. Who is he? Who am I actually? <clears throat> am I King Janaka, who dreamt that I was a beggar, or? Now, am I a beggar who is dreaming that I am a king? And then Sage Ashtavakra gives the answer. You are neither the king nor the beggar. You are the supreme self. You are the Atman. You are the pure consciousness that is eternal. You know that it that is always there with you, which persists unchanged even after death. The, the self exists eternally. Never does it cease to be exist. That is why I said, I was there, you were there, all the kings were there in the past and the present. How are we there? Because the self within us, it never dies. It is eternal. So mm. to the wise people, birth and death have no particular significance for them. That's to like, end, uh, just to add here, uh, the one what his minister or, or Rishi gave him is the higher level answer, actually higher level answer. But uh, in lower level answer is that he is the King Janaka, whether he came into the physical world to rule the kingdom for a uh, short time or he was a real beggar in another uh, life. I mean in astral plane when he go, when we all go, we all, our all souls will go to enjoy the uh, astral plane, what uh, Shanti was asking last time. So now we don't know exactly, are we here short time to enjoy this world or are we from that world? I mean where the astral plane is there. So are we just roaming roaming and came uh, into this body and just enjoying here or are we going back again tonight? You know like okay. that. Uh-huh. Uh, so nobody knows exactly here in this group also maybe one or two maybe they are enjoying. They came from another world, parallel world. That's what Girish also was telling the parallel world. Parallel okay. World. Yeah. So exactly means that these can be some people. They are understanding is a parallel world, and uh, physical and astral is a parallel world. They say because we keep go and come, go and come. But uh, uh, in another way, yeah, as per the scriptures, mm. but we mm. after die, I mean we won't come back again to this body, but we go to. Uh, like a uh, pitru or uh, you know the um, uh, astral body become like that yeah Something. yeah we take we take a different body but what here is what it says is our body changes okay oh. the the matter the body changes but oh. the self that was there with us it is always there it does not go anywhere so it continues the eye continues so that is actually the meaning of this verse you know so if you look at it see and 
uh, never was there a time where i when i did not exist no you no all these kings no the future no in the future shall any of us cease to be because the the self is always existing in the past present and future okay <coughs> now brother can i continue yes please okay now uh, so that is the um, the message from the verse now what is the take away from the verse how do you apply it to your life so this is how you can and look at it this i mean different people can give different interpretations yeah anybody have okay, questions this, yeah any any questions sorry sisters please uh, is it okay i mean do you uh, i mean uh, is it uh, can you relate to what i'm telling yeah yeah not, i think sister hori sister shalini or sister archana everybody yes Very sister good. all well going <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah actually actually that's why i said you know chapter 2 is uh, the highest philosophy is given the knowledge of the atman is given and the first time you hear it uh, it will take some time for us to digest it and to really come to terms with it it is just like uh, brother girish was telling so uh, as we go on like uh, all the aspects all the uh, how is uh, vishnu is actually who is the vishnu vishnu is the self the atman the pure consciousness so all the attributes of vishnu that is eternal okay is always ever uh, uh, is always present everywhere everything excellent all these qualities that we heard we will be hearing in uh, chapter 2 if we study at length so first we have learned that one in in verse 11 okay so the, like a uh, uh, the uh, our body is born it dies okay so you have to accept it then you telling that although the body body is born and you are dying you should not worry it worry why because you are not actually dying the i that is present in you is always there it is continuing it is eternal so you should not so why should you worry about death okay you are not going anywhere you continue to live you were there in the past you are here in the present and you are continuing to the future so please accept that fact the continuity of the eternal okay the atman is eternal it is non perishable okay so all infinite all this characteristics will be coming so okay so i deviated now the message you can take here is krishna is telling arjuna you are focusing on the wrong aspects of life so why is arjuna feeling sad because he is focusing on the physical body and mind okay why is he not doing his duty because he is thinking that he is killing all of them that means what is his focus his focus is on the body mind and intellect so the advice to arjuna meaning the advice to all of us is shift your focus from our body mind and intellect to the the atman the supreme self within you because the self was always there and it will continue to be there and if you look at it uh, a little example that is given is yes. see if you i think as children we would have done this little experiment or while i'm telling you you can do it if you place your finger your four finger your pointing finger in front of you and look at the finger do you see the things that are far away from you do you see if you keep your four finger keep it in front of your eye on top of the nose and you look at the finger when you look at the finger do you see the background no, no you don't you see. Have... no no you don't no. Verify is how to keep the. Uh, okay, you yes, take yes, your four yes, finger. Yes, you yes, take yes. your four finger. Uh, place it between the eyes in front of the nose, a little bit far away, and so that you can see your four finger. You look at the four finger. When you look at the four finger, can you see the background things that are far away? No. Yes. Yes, can see. Not so clear. No, if you if you are focusing only on the finger. Yeah, the yeah, you cannot see. 
yeah, yeah, the background won't be close. clear. Yeah, it's because it's closing you can... your eyes. Yeah. Okay. Even if you close, you don't close. The background you can see, but it's not clear. Okay. Now I'll tell the next part. Now you look at the. You don't look at the finger. You look at the background. Can you see the finger? No, you cannot see because no. you are away. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so you can't see the. Is the right thing? Mind can concentrate only on one thing at a time. Is it that's how mind is designed or something? I mean, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That that just uh, partly it's like that. So I will come to it. So actually, it's, it is telling you where you sh you should be focused. So it is telling you when you focus on the finger, you don't see the background, the fast, you know, things that are far away. When you look far away, you don't see what is close to you. So the advice to Krishna uh, is giving to Arjuna and to all of us is when you focus on the. In the world, which is far away, the self, which is close to you, the finger, which is close to you, it becomes out of focus. Now, if you focus, if you change your focus upon the finger, which is close to you, that means the self that is within yeah. you, the world becomes insignificant. It means you are saying that you look into yourself first. Yes. So that yeah. Outside that, of you disappear. Is it? Yeah. See, if you, if you look outside, you see only the world. Okay. Correct. Your focus you is on inside. the world. Yes. Correct. If you if you focus on the world, okay, you lose sight. See, if a person who is extroverted is focused on the world, does he see the inner self within? No, no yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. If you are introverted, if your focus is inside, as you look at the finger, your focus is inside. Do you see the world outside? No, no. The, whatever happens in the world, it does not matter to you. You are not carried away by the world happenings. Okay, a person who is not affected by the ups and downs of life, all that, when he has got spiritual strength. So what it means is, see, yes. you are tossed up and down in life. Because, why? Because your attention is on the body, mind and intellect. Whatever happens to the body, it affects you. When the body falls sick, you start worrying. Uh, if somebody talks a bad word about you, your feelings get affected. If your thoughts, okay, if your thoughts uh, are not very clear, it affects you. So whatever happens to the outside world, you get uh, caught up in the fluctuations. That means you get affected by what you perceive in the outside world, you get caught up by your emotions and your yes. thoughts. Therefore, he's telling that in order not to be caught up in the fluctuations of the outside world, in order for you to live a peaceful, calm and happy life, develop objectivity in life, become a detached person. So when you become detached and when you turn your attention, like what many of us are doing, why are we attending? Prabhu's classes. Why are we coming here? Because our focus is not all the time on the world. Our focus is more to spirituality. What is spirituality? It's focusing within finding out who we are. So when we are focusing inside and, and then we become, we don't get caught up by whatever happens in the outside, the visit, the, the ups and downs of life outside. It's, it's one, more, become... one more example I heard from someone, the person who buys the car, right, he has to utilize that car for only for driving and coming and keeping uh, aside, correct? But he, if he forget that and he keep on again opening the door, what's happening to the you know, car, and if it's too much attached, anybody scratches my car, anybody throw stone to my car. So that's how he's if he's attached to that car, then he cannot be uh, happy to you. Am I right? I mean, like he yes, is, brother. Instead of good. sometimes you have to be very careful, brother. There are people who do that, brother. They are like no, 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 no. I'm telling you. I again, know it's I'm difficult. Just... I mean, detachment. No, sister. I'm telling you very, very clearly. I'm telling everybody. Okay. The more, that. yeah, the more you are attached outside things in your suppose in your home. I have seen in many places. Um, uh, somebody's home, I went, they they you know, they don't allow me to keep my teacup on their table because they think that it's going to spoil, or uh, <laughs> something uh, uh, you know, 
they are very much careful and cautious so much that they are in it they are attached all to those things see it's dangerous i'm telling you so, and brothers yes yeah tell me yeah you can yeah, yeah brother very good what happen will happen in the end whether whether you are careful or not that is my observation i have uh, ha uh, yeah sister, yeah uh, uh uh what you said is uh, the point that we are trying to tell here is uh the, the example given by brother is actually a very good example is telling is do not get attached to the worldly possessions you know so when yeah. you are attached to your car what are happens to the car if you if you are driving a new car and there's a dent then you get so worried it is my new car and look at it somebody yeah. came and hit and cool. you start worrying yeah and then you buy like you like brother said so coming to the house some people are so careful uh, they have got a new carpet you know they say it's a white carpet oh please don't stamp on it don't go with your coffee onto the carpet you might spill yeah. on the carpet correct they cannot correct. enjoy life correct they all you you yes. right. you got got the point here exactly see yeah. we came in, we came into this life to enjoy this life not the things please understand please understand you are you are you see okay i'm telling you because we are making our soul enjoying atma is enjoying such is ananda is want to enjoy the life on this earth not the things please understand Correct? yes 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 brother actually yes. where does very true uh, the where does happiness actually come from happiness like brother said is coming from such a ananda that means it is coming from the inner self atma, within inside the paramatma it is not coming from the world uh, like another Never. example <laughs> yeah another example uh, it is you see the outside objects have got no uh, um, it's they have not objects that give you happiness Now, one same yes, uh, example yes, like yes because it keeps changing it yes, keeps changing like the higher version yes, it's, it's only temporary part. Yes, yes, yes. Because is. you don't have control on outside objects; they are changing. Correct. You don't have a control on them. Yeah. Yes, it's changing, and then yeah. different people have got different uh, likes and dislikes. You know, so the happiness that you feel is actually coming from your inner self. Like, for example, we used to uh, there's this example: uh, uh, one woman, uh, one person wanted divorce. the woman another person want to marry the same person same person <laughs> yeah yeah correct yeah so no, no. so the, no, don't the person is the person. same the person yeah. is the same where is the happiness coming so the happiness is not attached to worldly objects the happiness is actually coming from your inner within. self yes. yes it is within you that is the lasting happiness like sister said the happiness outside is temporary it is changing the more you connect you grow in world you will find more lasting happiness peace and happiness so that is why so krishna is actually advising arjuna the take away message is focus on the i within you which is permanent which is not changing focus on the changeless within the changing world the changing body changing mind changing intellect yeah that's a uh, one it's and anything i think that briefly i've said you know that this is the take away of uh, uh verse 11 and uh, verse 12 any questions maybe you should go back and reflect on it because that's what i said uh the uh, it is not easy to digest the first time we hear it and it comes as we gain more spiritual knowledge all these things slowly begin to sink in and then we can connect here and there and we understand more facts about the atman about vishnu or uh, mahalakshmi yeah, yeah. yeah thank you sister we, we can stop here and anyway as we said the major uh, takeaway is uh, happiness is in our own home not outside you can understand on that yeah Thank you. <coughs> Thank Saira. you, Brother. Beautifully yeah. said. Yeah. Thank you, Saira. Saira, we will see you again. Thank yeah. you very much, Saira. Thank you so much, sisters and sister. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, Saira. 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 Sa